DJ D2 102.7 FM and 1300 AM. And we just, uh, man, went back to 1976. 1976 it was. Uh, don't take away the music, Tavares. Uh, beautiful song. Beautiful song to get into the program this morning. January 20th. Wow. The time is flying, man. Time is flying. January is almost over in 2024. Ah, uh, just now we're gonna be down into carnival. We had one, we just concluded one here. Getting ready for the next course out in Aruba. They're starting off their carnival. So, radio listeners, welcome to Sports Forum for today, January 20th. I'm Antonio Venturin, of course, in here for the full hour with you to give you my analysis on sports. Combined with some interviews with uh, relevant persons in within the sporting uh, arena. This morning, we're going to be speaking to the representatives of the Department of Sports. And of course, as we start off 2024, we want to get them in to find out what the plans were, evaluate 2023, how did 2023 go, and uh, look towards the plans for 2024 shout out and pleasant good morning to uh, all the regular radio listeners i got a shout out uh, uh my guest from last week uh, very interesting programs a lot in program a lot of feedback on that one uh, so shout out to raymond brookson and alvin rumbly my guest last week uh who were here uh, we spoke about the history of their baseball career so pleasant good morning to them and all the regular radio listeners. Uh, Clavis Henderson, always in tune to the program, man. Pleasant good morning to you. Super Dave up there in St. Peter's. Pleasant good morning to you as well. Got a shout out to my boy down there in Texas or where is he right now? Uh, always in tune to the pro program. Ricky Boyrad. Uh, not to forget, of course, uh, Julian Tops Re Richards up there in the United States. Also a regular regular and constant listener to this program uh, via our Facebook live stream. Without further ado, let me go over to, in the meantime, between time, while we wait for uh, the second party to join us, we're going to go over to our guest in the studio, uh, Mr. Yes Hoslinger. Yes, good morning, man. Welcome to the program. How are you doing? Yes, good morning, good morning. I'm, uh, I'm actually doing great. So good to be here again. I think it's Maybe a year ago that I was here for the first yeah, time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, it's nice to be back, definitely. Hey, happy birthday to you. We got a shout out. Uh, happy birthday to you. And uh, thank you for spending your birthday here with us. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To talk a bit about sports. Usually I try to, you know, silently go through that birthday. Silently. Right? Everybody, 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 heard everybody, heard everybody know. Everybody heard it now. So, so yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the truth is definitely on you today. Yep, yep, yep. Hey. Definitely. So, how are things going with with you, man? And uh, from the sport, from sports perspective, uh, you know, I know you guys had a busy year, a busy end of the year, uh, yeah. with 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 some uh, uh, last minute projects that coming on stream. Some that are gonna come on stream in twenty twenty four. I think the last thing that I saw, which we could start off with, was you know we saw the, uh, I think the renovation of the Rahul Village. Uh, that was. Uh, that, yeah, that's gonna correct. get rolling. Correct. Um, yes, yeah, so I think I think twenty twenty three was definitely a, a very productive year, um, in the sense of uh, some tangible things that the public has seen, of course, with the, mm -hmm. with the Boardwalk Sports Park and a couple of other outdoor spaces that we created. But also a year of um, preparing um, to fix the field, indeed, um, and also to uh, to replace the the track. So. There's a lot of work that goes into that, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, putting down a new field, it's, you know, it's, it's half a million dollars, uh, putting down a new track is a million dollars, that doesn't happen just like that, mm -hmm. um, as you would know too, you, you cannot pay it from the, the regulier deans from your annual budget, so um, we were able, I think already two years ago, we made, we made a proposal um, for CapEx, capital expenditure, mm -hmm. um, and it's just, yeah, it's very great to see now that um, CapEx has been approved, I believe it's the first time in eight or nine years that this has happened. So mm -hmm. this finally creates a possibility for us to invest again and of course, um, yeah, do the much needed repairs as we know. Um, we're also of course busy with NRPB that has money uh, funds allocated towards it. But of course we need to take initiative in the meantime as well. And so let, let's let's focus in a bit on Raul Elite Sports Complex because of course we we, uh, we, had, uh, we have the, the um, 
Football Federation here on numerous occasions. So what exactly is going to be repaired or fixed at uh, Raul Illich? Okay, yeah, so we're, we're starting obviously with the, the main priority that is to be able to do the sport and to do the sport you need a field, of course. Mm -hmm. So we all know that the bleacher is also broken and, and, the, and the building as well needs repairs, but of course you start with the field. Mm -hmm. um, so that is the first thing that we're going to do now. Um, so, so the pitch is going to be... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the full pitch is going to be replaced. It's going to be removed. going back to the same artificial turf, or uh... yeah, yeah, artificial turf because basically you always see artificial turf because it's mm -hmm. way less in maintenance, um, and um, to have natural grass is just very difficult. Difficult. To yeah, yeah. 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 But so artificial turf has also progressed very much. So I know mm -hmm. there's some articles out there about artificial turf and this and that. Um, but as you can imagine, you know the 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 the, the how it's produced, etc., has, has mm -hmm. evolved, and of course, it, you know, it all adheres to all the uh, certifications. Um, it, it's a FIFA Pro approved field, so. So it's going to be a FIFA Pro uh, approved field now. Yes. Yes. And what does that entail exactly? When we say FIFA approved, what what kind of standards yeah, so, are we looking at? So if you wanna if you wanna hold a, a big tournament here, or if mm -hmm. you wanna play with a national team in the Nations League, mm -hmm. the official matches, there's a Concacaf Stadium regulation that you have to adhere to. So there's a lot of things, obviously, in that also when it comes to the bleachers and. And, uh, and certain rooms that you need, etc. But the field also has to be uh, from a, a certain standard, okay. and that's certain. You have FIFA Pro, and you have one lower level, and we're basically getting the the highest level. So meaning that we can, yeah, we will all. The field will always be approved. Okay. Uh, we're joined by uh, the head of the department, Ms. Janelle Richardson. Hi. Uh, pleasant good morning, man. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we started without you, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My apologies. I my think apologies. you 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 were able to pitch in here. You're able to jump in one time. Yeah, of course. Uh, so we started off uh, with looking back at 2023, and I started off with uh, asking yes about. Uh, I saw in the lat latter part of 2023, yeah. some projects was was uh, came to fruition, which I think you guys were, were anticipating for, for about a year, for a while. Yeah, yeah. And it came true finally. Yeah. So we were just talking about uh, Raul Illich. Anything you want to throw? You want to pitch in there? Of course, uh, you know we are throwing you on the <laughs> throwing you right to right the pitch in the, 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 the deep at one time. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, thank you for the opportunity to be here uh, mm -hmm. to speak about sports. Mm -hmm. um, we've done, like you mentioned, quite a lot in twenty twenty three. Um, I don't know if he started with the, the, the public spaces. And he started, but I jumped to Raul Lillich. Right. <laughs> yeah. I jumped we, to Raul Lillich first. Um, 2022 was a very fruitful year for us um, mm. in terms of uh, you know laying the groundwork um, in 2021 with our, our sport facilities policy um, and then doing the, the, the groundwork again in order to see some of these stuff come to fruition with our activation plan. Um, okay. And then in 2023, we were actually executing stuff. So um, we were able to install um, three um, public spaces, um, activating public space, spaces projects um, mm -hmm. on the boardwalk sports, on the boardwalk. The boardwalk um, was one. Yeah, um, at Belvedere. Okay. And also at the Sister Regina School. So the last one was installed, um, okay. I think in December, November, December, yeah. Yeah. Um, at the Sister Regina School. So we were able to, like I said, um, be able to put these little things in place so that the people of St. Martin could be able to engage in sport, which is what our, our mantra is. How has been, how's the, the response been from the community using those spaces and the evaluation of them using those spaces? Uh, because I know there are some challenges with vandalism and stuff like that, but those, those are very sturdy equipment, yeah, yeah. So the, 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 the anti-vandalism yeah, yeah, yeah. proof, right? Um, the calisthenics equipment that we've put in, they mm. are pretty, you know, we, we when we were looking at what to do and what to put in, you had to really consider vandalism, like you just mentioned, mm -hmm. um, and, and the durability of these you know, pieces of equipment. So they were coated, uh, especially for the Boardwalk Sports Park um, project. You know, you have, it's right near the sea, so you have to consider mm -hmm. the salt content of the air. Um, we have an agreement with a, a, a service provider who cleans those um, pieces of equipment okay. on, on a, uh, every two weeks. Um, so that we ensure the um, the longevity of the equipment as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I was at um, I was at the academy school yesterday, and mm -hmm. um, the principal over there, the manager over there, was like, "Yeah, she's really excited about the board boardwalk because the equipment there is really good, mm -hmm. and you know it really opens up people to be able to exercise without having to go to the gym, you know." 
Um, so the reviews of it, from what I've known or seen or heard, has been really positive, um, especially with the boardwalk. I'm not, sure. Sure, I'm, I'm not so sure of the, the, the Belvedere um, project and the Regina project thus far, um, because those are really in the community, whereas on the boardwalk, you know, um, the community could use it, the tourists could use it, anybody can use it, so it's a lot more accessible and usable because of the location. Um, so it will be interesting to see uh, us to go back into those communities like Belvedere and, uh, and Simpsonby to see what their thoughts are on it. What about the aspects for, because you also put in the, the beach volleyball space and the beach football and the, like, the OC what's ball. Your, your ball yeah. 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 How how are those being used? Because I, I, I oftentimes see, uh, for example, uh, students from the Sundial School walking towards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, actually, I wonder if, if they're, they're, they're also making use of that. Yeah. So for, first of all, the Beach Volleyball Association is obviously very happy because they have mm -hmm. now a permanent location because um, they kind of moved around a lot where they always had like a more mm -hmm. like a main makeshift field or, or a mother bay or they have their own mobile fields um, so they play there on a structural basis um, so that is good to see that they really have like a home now to play and to evolve the sport as well um, but also football you see a lot of kids always playing um, bocce ball although sometimes the bocce ball field is being used for the, the, the lifting of the tires oh, okay um, yeah so but uh, like you said the PE teachers actually because uh, I'm in contact with all the PE teachers and they it's funny because they I, I get emails all the time like hey um, can we use the space for our gym class I say yeah that, yes, that's exactly that's, that's the intention um, can we can we also reserve it I say okay no nope. cannot reserve it because <laughs> mm -hmm. that's kind of like the, the, the concept it's a public space but mm -hmm. generally speaking if you want to hold an event there you know you just go there make sure you're early and um, the space will be yours but um, it's, it's, it's cool to see that people um, are also a little bit like do you have to pay or you know, mm -hmm. no it's 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 free it's completely charge. free but i think there's also still a lot of people that don't know about it mm -hmm. you know that they they happen to come on the boardwalk and they're like hey where did, where did this pop up from so i think there's still for us also it's also you know we need to uh market it even more uh maybe make some some videos on how you use the equipment so mm -hmm. there's still some steps to take um to create more um encourage awareness users. encourage yeah. users yeah all right so um, I see in 2024 you guys also did something for boxing uh, uh, with uh, the portable ring. Yeah, is, yeah. Is... We, we, um, so back in 2022, we um, allocated some funds to be able to purchase some to purchase equipment materials, mm -hmm. um, and we did that also in 2023. Uh, so one of the things that we purchased was a oh well, yeah made funds available was for a portable boxing ring. Um, and uh, the other thing was for flooring for 3x3 and the third thing was for the football um, association we made funding available to them for materials so the ring now the ring is is that part of the NSI manages that or the Federal yeah. Boxing Federation yes, NSI, NSI. Yes. Okay. yeah so we had we had discussions with the Boxing Federation um, mm -hmm. and they indicated what is the standard for, for rings and stuff mm -hmm. and um, they gave us um, we collaborated with them on where to buy the stuff and and it was purchased and it's um, stored at one of our facilities and managed by the facility people okay. um, but it's available for usage right. by yeah. the organizations but i think what is good to notice to that you know it, it these are not just projects that came out of nowhere so uh, a facility policy was made which speaks mm -hmm. of a lot of things but also a chapter of utilizing public space mm -hmm. and then from there an activity an activation plan was made uh, together with the stakeholders to understand okay what type of concepts can we initiate so it would say okay focus we have beaches focus on beach sports so that's how the beach volleyball courts and beach mm -hmm. football came um, we have certain parks like Emilio's it would be cool maybe to put table tennis tables or a bushy ball court there so there's a lot of uh, concepts in there that have been worked out and that makes it now also easier moving forward so a lot of the groundwork is done mm -hmm. and now we can really you know continue the, statue the implementation roll out as the money comes yeah. Yeah. yeah all right yeah. so anything else in the pipeline that we, we, we <laughs> that where where that where public space is a concern or that is in the pipeline for 2024 yeah, the, the biggest you know? one for um that also has to do with our safeguarding policy mm -hmm. um which is a very important one you would notice that a lot of facilities don't always have drinkable water 
right? Okay. So, or you need to go to the toilets and, mm -hmm. and kind of fill your bottle. So we want to put water tap stations at all, the, um, at all facilities. All the facilities. Yeah. yeah. All right, radio listeners, if you just join us, of course, you're tuned to Sports Forum here on 102.7 FM, 1300 AM simulcast. And today, January 20th, we have the pleasure of having conversation with uh, Yes Horslinga and Janelle Richardson from the Department of Sports. And we're running through their 2023 uh Achievements. Achievements in <laughs> annual review and looking forward towards 2024, their plans in 2024. Now, Raul Elledge, back to Raul Elledge. The pitch is going to be repaired. What's the timeline for that? Uh, is there a specific timeline that is going to happen yeah. and that the contractors have to deliver it because I know football is going to be displaced for a while? <laughs> yeah, so the exact timeline is uh, they're starting the 5th of February. Okay. Um, the 4th of February, the container should be arriving. Usually you can get it the next day. Mm -hmm. And then it, it will take five to six weeks. Okay. Um, so it involves now picking up the pitch that is there? Correct. And um, fixing the substructure. The substructure yeah. so okay. I think there's about four containers, 44 containers of sand alone coming. Sand? It's, it's a very specific sand that okay. you cannot source um, on St. Martin or around here. Mm -hmm. um, so, and the substructure will be... Well, and that specific repaired. sand is related to what? Uh, observing the water or what was... It? Um, yeah, that creates the, the substructure also, of course. Um, yeah, I think it observes the water. There's the mm -hmm. drainage underneath, etc. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a certain layer of layers to ultimately okay. have the artificial grass on top. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. So 5th of Sep uh, February and uh, it's it's s scheduled to be completed when or any uh, base Well, we closed five the facility weeks, till the end of March just mm -hmm. to give us a little bit of extra time okay. just in case. Mm -hmm. um, but um, basically five to six weeks yeah. is what it takes. And I, I want to point out um, just for the for St. Martin and the public that this particular project that we're talking about at Rahul Village um, was part of our capital investments budget. Yeah. Um, capital investment, as you know, um, is, is something that you have to plan for years in advance. So mm -hmm. back in um, 2022, we did the proposal, we did our groundwork, our homework um, in terms of what we wanted to do. Um, and because we had the balanced budget as well, um, it was the possibility came to for us. Um, and then we made a request. Um, I think we wrote our advice for it, requesting the funds prior to the funds being made available already mm -hmm. within capital investment. So um, that was all through 2023, um, trying to solidify that. And the service provider who we went with, um, so the International Football Federation, um, who have experience in, in these types of things, um, you know, they received funds from us last year. Um, the latter part of last year, once mm -hmm. the funds were available. Um, so that means that no, all of this work can be done. Um, we're still working on the request for the track. Okay. Um, and that has taken some time because that in itself also is a lot of money that we are going to be utilizing capital, 2023 capital investment to do. Um, and also having to work with the local federation for athletics, mm -hmm. the regional federation for athletics, the international federation for athletics, the Dutch federation for athletics, yeah. all of these different entities, you know, we are consulting. But so the track, track is, is not going to be repaired at the same time? No, no, no it will be done after. But indeed, okay. like Janelle was saying already, the track um, is more technical. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with track and field, there's a lot of different disciplines. But also some mistakes have been made in in the current track. Mm -hmm. um, so you can imagine we are no experts on tracks. Yeah. We don't we don't have too much expertise on island. However, there is a gentleman, um, uh, Calvin Bryan, who used to be the the head coach of the national team of France, mm -hmm. who lives on the French side. So he also helped us, and indeed the regional body helped us, the Dutch Athletic Federation. Um, and then that's also how we realize, okay, there's certain mistakes in the current track yeah. that we need to fix. In so when you say, so which, what kind of mistakes are we talking about? Like so corners where this should no, be so straight? Like, <laughs> no, like the, the steeplechase, for example, is okay, in the wrong, wrong bend. Place. Okay, okay. Wrong bend. okay. You have, a, um, for, for the 100 meters, for example, too, mm -hmm. um, we only have the 100 meters starting on one side of the track. Okay. Um, which means that when, if you are a, if, if it's a windy With a headwind. You're going to be running into the wind. Yeah. And professionals don't want slow times. Okay. You know, they don't want to run on a track where they know they're going to post mm -hmm, slow mm -hmm. times. 
So it should have been considered to have a hundred meters on the other side mm -hmm. where you would run with the, the wind on your back. Mm -hmm. So um, that also we're looking and at drainage, drainage, issue, drainage, drainage issues. issues. Um, so the water is kind of just settling in certain spots, spots. which deteriorates the track a lot quicker. But also mm -hmm. sourcing the right track for our needs. You know, yeah. there's, there's, there's some huge suppliers out there. Mm -hmm. um, they all want the job, obviously. Um, but how do you make the right decision that this is the track that we need? We do not need an Olympic track. Okay. You know, our track is uh, for general usage, um, but for short and for long distance. So, you know, certain suppliers are more focused on the real, real performance tracks. Mm -hmm. um, that is not the need that we have. But we yeah. do want to organize uh, maybe a Carifta Games or a Junior Carifta Games. Mm -hmm. So we do mm -hmm. need to make sure the track is of that quality. Yeah. Um, and then there's different different types of structures of how a track is made. So you can imagine, <laughs> it's like, okay, how do we make the, the best decision that is right for us? Well, you did already. You, you made the decision. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, made a decision already. Made. And the <laughs> funds are available now to be exactly. available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're working on the advice. So you have to hold on to them fast. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, <laughs> and use yeah, them yeah. fast. Okay, I, yeah. I mean, the, the, the funds have been, were allocated from the capital investment from 2023. So mm -hmm. um, we are working on the advice now to, to, to do it. And again, you know, in the past, um, some of these, our sports facilities are installed, they're placed there, and people always say, yeah, you put things on, but you don't take care of it, or you don't, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm, don't mind mm -hmm. how you've done it, or whatever. Um, and, and if you don't have the experts who know how these things work, assisting you to do these things, then you, you end up making bad decisions. Um, okay. that may not be beneficial to the sport in the long run. So we're really trying to ensure... So how are you dealing with that now? Because you're going to fix the field, uh, yeah. you're <clears throat> going to fix the football pitch. Is yeah. there any kind of contract for maintenance that the suppliers yeah, so, are going are yeah, gonna to facilitate yeah, yeah. with it? So in, in the subsidy of uh, 2024 for NSI, we allocated funds specifically specifically for the field. So there, mm -hmm. there, need, there will be a, a service provider to, to maintain the field and there will be a service provider to maintain... Um, the track, but important also is when you choose a supplier, mm -hmm. what is the warranty? What is the after service product support? Yeah. These are all things that were all a part of making the right decision, you know? Um, so obviously when they come down to install the track, they will also give a training to the, the service provider how to maintain the track. They will also supply the necessary materials and equipment yeah. to maintain. Um, so all of that is, um, accounted for and um yeah. in this yeah all right radio listeners you're tuned to sports forum on pjd2 102.7 fm 1300 am shout out to my boy mac richardson in tune hey kyron herbert man nice to see you watching uh condolences on your father of course uh sensei oscar herbert who was laid to rest this week on monday uh so he's uh definitely remembered now, um, school gym repairs um, with our with in connection NRPB. with our NRPB, yeah. the Sundell gym. I think someone that's posted a peach. That's that's scheduled yeah, yeah, to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. what's well, going to happen there? You know that that project in itself was something that we really really pushed for the school mm -hmm. gyms um, mm -hmm. because following the hurricane, the the trust fund monies are made available. Um, there is focus on houses and buildings and schools and roofs and whatever and it was very interesting to me that the school gyms were left a out. part of the school <laughs> were, <laughs> were left, left out. out so um when the um uh, i think early part of 2023 um we were given the green light mm -hmm. that um that the funds the extra funds that are being allocated through the trust fund would also include school gyms so we're really happy about that um, so we did our uh, little bit of research, we connected with the schools, we visited the schools on numerous mm -hmm. occasions to ascertain what the situation is. And for the most part, the school gyms, they just require um, updated equipment, you know, replacement of the, the, the exercise equipment within the gyms. Mm -hmm. um, but in the case of MPC and Sundayo, um, their outdoor gyms are require a lot more significant work. So mm -hmm. we had discussions and consultations with them. We made notes of what it is that is necessary, and uh, Sunday School and MPC Outdoor Gyms are both on the books to, on be, the repaired. Books to be repaired. Well, so, based on our discussions um, that we've had with NRPB, um, those works are a lot closer to being um, executed. Uh, so, we're looking at the mid part of this year um, mm -hmm. for the school gyms to be done. 
And uh, so you'll see, I, I'm hoping that by the start of the new school year, all of these different schools will have their school gyms um, repaired and good to go. All right. Now, your annual review that you published this week, uh, speak about 215K for school grassroots sports program. Tell us a bit about, about uh, some of the programs that were financed with that, uh, that chunk of your budget. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's a chunk, two hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, so um, we we allocate funding um, to the National Sports Institute, um, mm -hmm. and who then disperse funding to the different sport organizations and um, sport programs. Mm -hmm. um, so for over twenty twenty three, I believe we had netball receiving funding, we had football receiving funding. Um, who else? You have the swimming program, of course. Yes. Uh, that is always there. You have um, the school sailing program, which is a very nice program as well. The six, uh, the, the the swimming program that's that's for the students to get their diploma in B yes. in primary yes, school. Yes, okay. yes, yes, correct. We focus on mainly on A, just mm -hmm. to ensure that oh, everybody just... can get that that base. Yeah. Everybody can swim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least. At least, yeah. And then he mentioned um, the the sailing program, and I think it was about. Four schools, was it four? Yeah, four, uh, four schools, yeah. And yeah. I think it's 12 kids per school that they take out. And that's a good mm -hmm. example of a sport that is not easily accessible. It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. a, an expensive sport. Um, but they really do a good job in trying to make the sport yeah, more accessible for kids that might not be able to do the sport and might not have the means, etc. Um, so they really, through the school, they, they, yeah, I guess they choose children that can enter the program. They first learn to swim, mm -hmm. basic safety requirements, and then they, they learn to sail. But sailing also leads to a lot more, right? Because you have the big marine industry here with a lot of job opportunities. So I really love it because they, as a child, you get to get a little taste of that sport and industry, which maybe in the future will, um, you know, lead oh, it's to a, a great, lot more. It's a great initiative. It opens uh, up an area that, uh, you know, Parents don't usually jump yeah, no, into with no, their kids, no, yeah. and uh, indeed, uh, yeah, sailing uh, is a big marine industry has a big chunk of our uh, GDP. So yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely, we want to yeah. get some uh, our locals in there. Our there locals involved in there. Yeah, yeah. 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 Now, uh, your report mentioned also uh, uh, ch child safeguarding guidelines in sports. Yeah. What does that entail exactly? So we. Um, Back, I don't know, we haven't finished the policy just yet um, with child safeguarding because it involved a lot of um, consultations with court of guardianship, with the police, with social SSSD, um, so, uh, student support services um, in order to develop it. But what we're trying to do is um, ensure that all the sport organizations are aware of and can handle um, any challenges that might arise where young people are concerned because obviously their main a stakeholder is young people. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea behind that is to educate the sport organizations, um, have a, a safe person within every organization that a young person can go to if they're facing any challenges. Um, you know, trying to avoid any bullying, trying to avoid any discrimination against young people, um, but have persons who are in the different sport organizations with the knowledge and understanding of how to deal with those types of scenarios. Mm -hmm. Um, but what we did end up doing in 2023, um, prior to the finalization of the, the guidelines, um, is have consultations with, um, I think it was about four or five different organizations who responded to our um, uh, request to participate, um, and for them to create internal policies within their sport organization, whereby they outline how they are going to handle any scenario or situation that occurs. Um, relating to a young person or a vulnerable person. Um, so that's what we started out. Um, we are um, looking to extend on that or improve on that um, mm -hmm. in 2024 by um, doing some uh, first aid training um, for all coaches. So again, you're able to handle any scenario or situation that occurs within your sport organization. Um, and then also, um, what we're also looking at for 2024 is to perhaps have a register of coaches, um, that all coaches are registered somewhere centrally. Mm -hmm. uh, we had discussions with Court of Guardianship um, about it, and um, based on what they've advised us to do, it's something that's possible. And um, 
um, the idea is again um, transparency for the, the people of St. Martin parents to know um, these are the persons that have been recognized as coaches mm -hmm. um, within this particular sport um, this is how I can contact them um, you know government sees we, we outline specifically what trainings they've done mm -hmm. what coaching certificate they've had if they have first aid training if they've done child safeguarding as well which is another thing that we are looking at working with um, student support services to do um, mm -hmm. some type of tri child safeguarding course for the coaches as well so um yeah that's that, that that's that particular project for us now what about the aspect because uh, this week i think uh, this not think uh, i know last week we had uh, there was uh, the finals at the little league stadium and there were, mm -hmm. there was uh, that was kind of disrupted by uh, some fighting some fighting uh, yeah. some disturbances some delinquent yeah. youth yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, who i understand uh, may <laughs> may be known already in in some yeah. areas uh, what, I, what? I think um that particular scenario mm -hmm. so i i just happened to be in the area um mm -hmm. just outside of little league when that stuff was going on so i didn't know specifically what was happening but um i was told that it involved um a young man who is actually one of the coordinators at the melford hazel um uh property that we have mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the reasons why Milford Hazel has been closed for quite some time as well because the kids in that area have taken over that area and um, has they've continuously vandalized the location um, and um, we're trying to figure out ways and means to deal with that situation um, through the police um, but yeah you have these kids who feel like they could do whatever and whenever and nobody could say anything to them and um that's a societal issue um i think and um, we as a society have to come together to see how we could rectify or i don't know i don't, I don't know i don't know how you do that how do we go forward because <laughs> the method it was can't, it can't remain closed forever yeah, yeah you're correct so, <laughs> you're correct what's the plan to to, to uh short term long term maybe medium term to to a get a facility I, reopen I, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't have a I don't have a um, a solution wow. to the to the situation. To be honest, um, we've had discussions with the police about it. Mm -hmm. um, they've gone in that area, um, but you know the sport facility managers are concerned for their staff um, because every time the facility is open, they're threatening the staff and they're threatening the users of the facility as well. Um, so you know where where if if there is a suggestion somewhere we're really definitely open to to hearing it and and seeing how we can come together for a solution um i would really like to see that facility open um but obviously you have to consider the safety of the users um, over definitely. there and um, it doesn't seem like those young individuals are going to be moving from there because they've created their own stronghold so um, I yeah, I definitely <laughs> want to commend the league, uh, so, league softball and uh, league softball and baseball uh, yeah. association because uh, they managed to complete their finals. Uh, you yeah. know, despite that. Despite that, I think uh, I was there. The, 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 I think the police were called to the facility like four times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> saw know, four or five saw times. I saw that and uh, you know, and fortunately, they were able to. Uh, complete the games uh, the games went the games were top notch yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know that that's that's the unfortunate part because the games were really on a high level close games uh you know the, the kids were highly competitive well disciplined the, the ones that were actually Play. engaged in the sport, <laughs> in the sport yeah. and all of this will happen you yeah know, and that's 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 important too what you just said those yeah. that were engaged in the sport uh -huh. um, we know and we see that sport in itself is a great tool for for our young people um, and you're, you're building great characters, you mm -hmm. know, of persons who play sport, um, the camaraderie that exists within sport, the, um, the respect that, that exists within sport is very important. And that's why we encourage, you know, people to get engaged in sport and through all of the different programs that we have, you know, you're providing funding um, for coaches or you're providing mm -hmm. funding or access to facilities. All of that is to give and in, to give persons who may not have the funding or the money or the wherewithal um, to participate in sport and, and, and use it as a positive tool. All right, radio listeners, you enjoyed the Sports Forum on PJD2, 102.7 and 1300 AM. We're also streaming live on Facebook. I want to shout out, of course, to uh, 
Super D, Daniel Griffith. Uh, pleasant good morning to you, man. Julia Ambrosina. How are you doing this morning? Uh, and of course, we had a question there from Julian Richards. He wants, wanted to know what happened to the indoor facility. I think that indoor facility at MPC is still, that that is still uh, functional because they have two, have two gyms at MPC. Yeah, they have two gyms. Yeah. Um, one was newer than the other. Correct. Um, we also looked at that facility as well. So I think um, in those indoor facilities, there was minor stuff. Mm -hmm. windows um equipment um, that needed to be replaced um that's about it really um i think with the focus because the outdoor gym has been down for quite some time no roof and all that kind of stuff um they're gonna do some work there all right let's look at uh your sports su uh, supported through subsidy uh what three hundred and sixty thousand plus uh, spent yeah. on that? Yeah, we, we're really happy. <laughs> <laughs> You're really happy. Yeah, yeah, no, you wanted to spend more or less? Yeah, if, we, if we could spend more, we would spend more. You uh -huh. know, but we. I'm saying I'm really happy about that, and and that's why it's important that we put this information out because mm -hmm. you know we want the people of Saint Martin to know that we do support sports, we do support organizations, athletes directly. Um, uh, so we've made funds available to, I want to say, uh, about four or five different students who are at school um, somewhere, whether in baseball, basketball, mm -hmm. um, softball. Um, we have supported organizations to travel. So football was very active in 2023. Mm -hmm. And imagine, imagine um, if you're assisting a whole team to travel. That's a good amount of chunk of change <laughs> to travel. Um, athletics has done did um, well over mm -hmm. 2023 as well so we supported them in their movement special olympics we supported as well um the uh baseball um tournament that we had international tournament that we had locally um, the Saints. sorry back of the, the Saints, yeah back of the states which is netball mm -hmm. um, sailing different tournaments abroad uh, um, cycling as well a couple of athletes went to the caribbean championships um, supported um, uh, Nicole Bas too. basketball that went performer sports academy that went to Miami yeah uh, with uh, with various players uh, various players that went to the Netherlands for mm -hmm. tryouts yeah so basketball study finance. through study finance as well um, you had the marathon you had the same ones they run um, those things uh, also receive funding from us as well so yeah now the national teams that travel is is there a specific criteria that you guys use when when uh, or formula that you use when uh, disbursing subsidy for the national teams or is it automatic that national teams would qualify? And well, I say that from the perspective of, for example, uh, if there's a federation that, for example, doesn't have their stuff in order in the sense of they've not lived up to their own constitution, yeah. for example, and they just <laughs> I'm moseying on. <laughs> he's getting into it now. <laughs> he's getting into it now. Um, no, I would right. say this. I would mm. say this. We are not there to disadvantage the athletes. Okay. That's what's most important. The mm -hmm. athletes. Um, so if an organization comes to the Department of Sport mm -hmm. and they say there is a regulated tournament whether regionally or internationally that they would want to participate in mm -hmm. you know you ask your basic questions um, about the national team and usually a federation we encourage federations mm -hmm. to come to us because what you don't want is individual athletes coming and saying hey mm -hmm. support me but then they have not been vetted or they don't mm -hmm. we we don't know what the standards are in every sport you know yeah. um we rely on the advice of the federations to say hey this is my sport I know uh, what the level is um, and for you to be able to participate in this championship, Caribbean championships or whatever, uh, this is the level and these athletes meet that level. Okay, I ask that question because, you know, if you have a national team traveling, you would want to, as the, the department or NSI, you would want to know that a federation also has grassroots uh, sporting activities on the island and organized turn of regular competitions on the yeah. island as opposed to just traveling for example right. so the, the, the question was more based from that perspective yeah, yeah, yeah. you yeah. know because you you want to see that it's when the national teams are going, going up correct yeah. so for the most part um like for example we mentioned um football they received quite some funds from us mm -hmm. this year and you know they have a school tournament yeah they, they really have, have some top-notch programs they got a lot of stuff going on mm -hmm. so for us, it's usually a no-brainer for us to be able to support 
um, the Football Federation. Um, we know that, for example, um, netball, they had the, a school tournament, school tournament going on. Primary school, secondary um, school. And they, mm -hmm. they're doing some development there in terms of the development of their mm -hmm. kids, the, the, the girls. So you support that. I think also we, 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 obviously all the sports organizations are with stakeholders, so it's very important mm -hmm. that we have good relationships with them, that we're in consultation with them, that we know what's going on. And we all know to, to build a sport, there are certain prerequisites. You know, you, you start with the foundation, mm -hmm. that you have training sessions, that you focus on the youth, that your trainers are trained, mm -hmm. um, all that, that you have a league, which is very important, that, the, that the, the, the kids are exposed to competition on a local level before they go abroad. Yeah. Um, so it's not to say that, you know, a request comes in and we do not know anything about the organization. So oftentimes, if, an, or if a sport maybe has been a little bit dormant and they're back up. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you see they quickly want to, you know, go abroad and compete on the highest level, but mm -hmm. then we would always have conversations, listen, yeah. you have to first focus on, you know, locally. locally local your development. players need to be training on a weekly basis by good mm -hmm. trainers. So there's a lot of um, things that first need to be covered. And in those discussions, we would also say like, of course we want to support you because we never mm -hmm. want to hamper the athletes, but you should first focus on this, this, and this. Yeah. And it's also part of, you know, growing the capacity um, and, the, and, and the strength of these organizations because we know almost all sports is done on a volunteer basis. So that's also mm -hmm. the, the, the challenge. You have a, a board, they're all volunteers in, in those positions, but how do you guarantee continuity? How do you guarantee that they, you know, keep developing? Um, so it's also for us important when they make a request and they have to adhere to certain criteria. It's not like, oh, you don't adhere to it or you, you cannot manage to get it all done. Uh, too bad for you. No, of course, we would also sit down and see, okay, how can we help you? Yeah. Um, if you mm -hmm. need to make a budget, because at the end of the day, you're not doing it for us. Like all these things that we require, you should do in general. If you organize mm -hmm. a tournament, you should always prepare a budget for your tournament. Not because the sports department wants a budget, but if you have difficulty making a budget, okay, let's sit together and, and, put and go through it, you know? Because yeah. at the end of the day, we want to be supportive as much as possible. No, what about the St. Martin uh, Sports Federation? Because they were supposed to be, according to the, the um, diagram, the structure of sport that you yeah. released there at the top of the yeah. food chain as it pertains to sport. Yeah. So we, we, we released that diagram and that's an ideal situation. <laughs> ideal situation. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that. That's an ideal situation. But um, no, we... Obviously, the Department of Sport is responsible for what government is responsible for. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have the National Sports Institute, which is more on an execution basis uh, and the management of our facilities. And as you know, the Sport Federation is to bring all the different federations together. And, um, you know, we've seen that there's been some challenges or, you know, the different sport organizations have voiced their concerns with the federation and its functioning mm -hmm. and um, all I would say is that we uh, encourage all the organizations, all the federations to come together and to, you know, um, be the change that you would like to see. Yeah, yeah. but there's definitely movement mm -hmm. there and um, I hope, you know, I, I believe they're going to have an election as well and uh, with a change of positions and I guess, get, you know, get some new energy into that entity. Mm -hmm. and, we Obviously, it's, it's, for us, it's very important because this entity is actually, you know, when it comes to um, um, structured and competitive sports, the most important entity. And it would make our life a lot easier, too, because we mm -hmm. can then, of course, finance them. And that trickles down to all their members. So, obviously, they can operate in a way quicker way than we can because mm -hmm. you know, it's government. So, there's a whole process. Um, so, and of course, also when it comes to all the regional tournaments, uh, the multi multi sport tournaments abroad, uh, of course, yeah, we want to be here. Main body. We mm -hmm. want to be represented again. So, um, like I was saying just now about supporting the sports organization, also in their administration and, and, and from an organization perspective, that entity would then fill that role mostly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. Their members, yeah. um, you know. And for the most part, we that's something that we've been doing. Um, over the years, um, supporting organizations with, for example, getting their statues together, mm -hmm. um, financially helping them get their statues together, okay. get their chamber um, stuff together. You know, we pay directly to the to the notary um, because we want to see from an administrative perspective. Everybody has their crib number because obviously, mm -hmm. if you're gonna mm -hmm. request funding from government, you, you, need to have, yeah. you have to have your crib number. You have mm -hmm. to have your 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 organization um, in place. Um, Yisk has also, also been, you know, um, 
collaborating very closely with all of our sports stakeholders um, in terms of how their organizational structure is set up. Um, um, we're working on a, a sport administration manual as well, um, which would also give guidance to organizations in terms of the structure, mm -hmm. in terms of um, where, uh, you know, how to manage your funding, all these different things um, to be able to support these organizations. And we would hope that the uh, St. Martin's Sports Olympic Federation, Sports Federation, whatever they're called, um, <laughs> will, will be able to provide that type of assistance to their membership. Okay. All right. Your report also mentioned two newly established federations in 2023. Yeah, yeah so that was the, the Baseball Softball Federation okay. that has been reestablished in that sense. Okay. Uh -huh. So we indeed help them as well with their with their articles of incorporation and mm -hmm. also their their membership uh, to Kokabe and to World Baseball Softball Confederation, and uh, there is a newly established beach volleyball okay, um, right. association who is then a member of Simfa the, uh, volleyball, the volleyball, volleyball Federation. Federation. Yeah. Okay, you guys, from your perspective, do you get the because you deal with the federations and the associations. Uh, is there a good understanding between the federations and the association as to their role? Because sometimes I get I get the impression that yeah, <laughs> I think that understanding is starting to grow. Okay, but I think of course since ten and ten that we have to start all these governing bodies mm -hmm. um, on St. Martin because they were all mostly in Curacao, I believe. You know, mm -hmm. as Netherlands Antilles, I cannot really say what exactly happened then, but you can imagine. At that moment, is the most important that you have a well-functioning um, umbrella organization mm -hmm. that kind of uh, manages that. And, of course, they did a good job. What are some of the tasks that the umbrella organization should do compared to, for example, a member association? Mm -hmm. okay, if, I, if you could kind of mm -hmm. clarify mm -hmm. that, because a lot of people are asking themselves those kind of questions, yeah. you know. I'll, I'll, I'll use um, perhaps the Football Federation as an example. Mm -hmm. um, you have the Football Federation. Um, and they have their members, and all their members are associations. Mm -hmm. um, now, the football, the football federation, in their case, organizes their national tournaments locally, right? Mm -hmm. um, and they also manage or develop the national teams, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then the associations play in these tournaments, um, and and the uh, athletes are taken from the different members to be able to field the national team. Now, that's one type of structure that exists. Um, mm -hmm. But then if you have, for example, um, volleyball, you have Simva as the national organization, but under them you have beach volleyball, for example, who, as, who themselves would have their own members um, for the organization of beach volleyball. Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. um, in the basketball federation, for example, um, for me, the, the ideal situation would be that you have the basketball federation that manages the whole thing, but then you have... Um, the people who do 3x3 and they organize 3x3 separately mm -hmm. or you have um, uh, SIBA who would organize youth basketball separately mm -hmm. and then you would have I don't know whichever other organization doing veterans basketball separately and all of that falls or under quality the doing female exactly mm -hmm. and then all of that comes under the federation um, you have the base he just mentioned the baseball softball federation that just um, came together um, they are the umbrella organization, but you already have existing the National Softball Association who do quite well in the organization of their... United their, Softball Association. Oh, yeah, they, they changed the name. name. Oh, they changed the name? <laughs> yeah, okay. United. <laughs> so they now organize softball. You have mm -hmm. Little League, who we mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. also do the school tournament and their own tournament um, as well. You have Pelican League as an association, the also league. do uh, stuff and, you know... So mm -hmm. um, I think that within each sport, you have a different type of setup based on what the existing scenario is. Mm -hmm. And I um, would encourage, you know, some type of appreciation for these associations who already do it mm -hmm. and encourage the federations to support them in that. Um, mm -hmm. But then if you don't have it being done like that, then in the case of, for example, um, volleyball, volleyball does it as a federation themselves. They do all of the organization yeah. of the national teams mm -hmm. and the local mm -hmm. tournaments, and they encourage the teams to come come in and play. So I think depending on the sport, you'll have you'll have a different setup, a different yeah. constellation. Um, um, but, but all of this is outlined internationally. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean uh, that's the beautiful part of sport. Okay. It's, it's everywhere basically the same. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the international federation sets out the constitution and the guidelines on how the sport is structured. 
And then when you become a member as your national federation, the governing body locally, which is just one, you have to follow exactly what they do. But what makes it a little difficult for us is because we're so small, yeah. um, you could imagine, let's say, a, a well-organized sport like volleyball. Um, they probably have about maybe eight teams, uh, female and male. Um, a team maybe has 10 players. Um, so let's say the whole organization has a participation of uh, 100 athletes. Mm -hmm. But to, and let's say you have eight teams, but to make an association for all those eight teams, so you're going to have a team of 10, which is established as an association with a board of five, you can imagine it becomes very Confusing. difficult and, yeah, complex. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and that's because we're a small island and, and, you know, so they fill it in as, okay, the, the, these teams are just members of the federation and the federation basically runs the league and kind of organizes it on, fully on their behalf. And that, and that works well. Mm -hmm. um, so it, sometimes it's it's per sport how you gotta look at how it. do you yeah. have to look at it? now any uh, any plans for example because internationally there there's a uh, arbitration committee that handles a bit uh, you know the the disagreements in sports any plans because you guys at the department of sports can't do it but any plans for example to promote or to set up something like that on the island because I, I get an impression sometimes that. Because some of the some of the conflicts that are ongoing are not resolved, it then ends up hindering the sports. Is there any possibility or any thinking? Well, I think I, I think um, a international federation, if you are a member of the federation, of course, mm -hmm. has a certain influence on it as well. Okay. I know, for example, they are were also present here for the election of the football federation. You know, to mm -hmm. guide that process and make sure it's done well. Um, and then they also have an electoral committee, etc. But I think we really need to move forward to having a well-functioning St. Martin Sports and Olympic Federation. Yeah. Or, okay. or so that's a certain point. Yeah. That is crucial. crucial. Mm -hmm. And that entity can then indeed set up a committee or a... a yeah. Uh, or sort of an arbitration committee or yeah, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. can uh, rule on disputes for yeah. all the But also there so. you need to be very careful because every mm -hmm. sport is again governed by itself as a sport so mm -hmm. the the how far how much say does an olympic federation have is also limited of course mm -hmm. um, but it would be yeah it's, it's very crucial for us to to solve these type of issues that are there all right we're running out of time 2024 oh, wow. <laughs> let's look at 2024 we need we need two hours to do this but one hour is not <laughs> so much to talk about 2024 uh we spoke already about some of the um uh, repair, repairs that's going to take place. Yeah. What are, no, funding for 2020, subsidies for 2024. Is there a specific deadline that, that, uh, for example, the grassroots sports for, yeah. they have to submit their request for subsidy? Uh, how, how does that work? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so subsidies in general, um, we follow mm -hmm. the subsidy ordinance, um, which is the law um, mm -hmm. that requests have to be made at least two months prior to any activity that you're going to do. Okay. Um, what I do encourage people because um, considering where we are now going into a transition um, of a new government, then time, a lot of time goes by mm -hmm. in these processes and it's very frustrating for us internally and the our stakeholders as well. So anybody wanting financial assistance from government, I would really suggest that you don't wait two months prior, but you come maybe three or four months prior. Um, and we can work with you on um, putting in your request and then we will do what we have to do in terms of following it along its process um, to be able to, to finalize any requests coming in. So um, we encourage federations to come. Mm -hmm. We have on our Facebook page the subsidy program requirements, which outlines the process itself, what documentation that you have to bring in, um, so as much information as possible if you bring it in, um, then it makes that process seamless and then you can make your request. But as early as possible in this year, we encourage people to come. And preferably also combine, yeah? So basically, if you want to prepare your sports well, you also mm -hmm. look at the whole year, okay, what, okay. Are, or what are we planning to do? Mm -hmm. We have this tournament then, we're sending these abroad then, we're, we have a grassroots program So then. a good year plan, actually. Yeah, yes, and then exactly. make one request with these multiple things, okay. because if you make three requests over the year, you know, you got to do it three times. Three <laughs> times the whole process, and, yeah. and it just becomes cumbersome. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, uh, and that's why I said the, the federation in these cases are very important because the federation should have an overview of what the plan is for that year. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, we had a, a I had a situation where 
an individual comes and um, last year, um, an individual comes, requests funding, they are endorsed by the Federation, and then the Federation comes a little bit later on asking for the same type of event or to tournament. Um, one gets approved in a timely manner because the individual came timely, and then the other one doesn't because it's late. Um, so it's important that federations also have an overview of what's going on for the year, where you want to see your athletes going and doing, and what type of assistance you need, and then come as one and make the request. Now, I noticed uh, recently, uh, last uh, in the latter part of the year, there was a surge of a number of students who were scouted, either scouted or drafted, yeah. uh, with commitments to, to schools abroad. Yeah. Any particular process that those students or their parents, or do they have to go through the federation? How, how, how would that work in cases like that? Um, so, um, because we saw people for volleyball being, yeah, being and softball. scouted, softball, yeah. baseball. Yeah. So <laughs> it the, was the, really the, you know, the issue. The issue is um, that okay. So we always encourage uh, mm. students to make requests through study finance mm -hmm. um, so that they could receive the proper funding that they need. Mm -hmm. um, we are not trying to counter that process that mm -hmm. is study finance. Yeah. Um, so we have to be very mindful of what we're issuing funding for because for us it's a scholarship it's a it's a full you're getting the monies fully mm -hmm. as opposed to with study finance you're getting certain money and then you have to pay back certain money so it's a different mm -hmm. process so we're not trying to circumvent that process at all mm -hmm. um but what we focus on is more the sports part of them going to school right um so what do you need you need insurance you need um, equipment, you need materials, you need whatever. Um, and that's what we try to focus our funding on for these kids. But we always encourage them to go through study finance to receive funding. But the timing also is always a challenge because um, obviously... Um, they would have to do it now before February 15th. <laughs> you're right. It's always a challenge. And then and then the, they get scouted and then the scout want them to come in like in January for school. Yeah. You know, and that process in requesting funding doesn't just happen just like that. Correct. It takes some time. So parents and these kids have to be aware of the fact that, okay, if you commit to something now for now, then from a funding, from a government perspective, because we have processes, you would have to, you know, see how you can assist yourself and then work towards receiving funding from government, perhaps in the start of the new year, August, as opposed to now for now. All right. We're out of time. Yes, your final words. Your final words before we close. We had. We still have so much that we could talk about. Yeah, yeah, and I have yeah, to have yeah. you guys back, man. We only touched the tip of the iceberg. Here. Yeah, because I, I noticed also we speak a lot about sports, mm -hmm. but our role as government is also to focus on just the movements in general. You know, mm -hmm. so also the unorganized physical activity, or mm -hmm. you see, and that's where these public spaces this also come move. into play, or. Anybody going on the road to, to walk or anybody going in the, the hiking trails to hike, all of that, or a child that goes to the playground to play is mm -hmm. a form of physical activity and movement, you know? Mm -hmm. So sometimes we're very focused on the sports, 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 but it's also a role to focus on any encouraging any type of movement um, to be... Um, yeah, engaged, yeah. engaged. Even for employers. Yeah, employers. so that's another, another thing. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that. I, I saw that. it. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, indeed, uh, you know, you want healthy employees. Hey, what do you do? Create incentives. Um, maybe give them a discount to get a membership or maybe even say you get 30 minutes of your time to be physically active or let's mm -hmm. do our meeting, a walking meeting. There's a lot of initiatives and that's another um, um, yeah, policy or another policy, but Guidelines. Uh, guidelines that we created and that we hope to also implement. Uh, in 2024. So, yeah, in closing, actually, I think I think 2023 was a, a productive year in uh, for pr preparing a lot for what now, and, and that is pretty exciting now, um, to finally execute, you know, to finally mm -hmm. see some more tangible things happen as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's promising, and um, it's going to start off right away next week um, with a football field. So, All right. Janelle. Yeah. Your final words. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity to have us on here. Um, we'll definitely come back to further explain all the different stuff that we have been developing over the last couple of years and, you know, putting um, plans in place and now executing in 2024. So we're really looking forward to this year. Um, people are going to see a lot of stuff rolled out um, and we're really excited about it because, like I said, uh, it's been two, three years in the making um, for what you're going to see tangibly now. 
and um, look out for it. Um, if anybody wants further information from the Department of Sport, we have a really active Department of Sport Facebook page. You can always go there. We have our schedules. Um, we're really connected with the different sport organizations in terms of what's been going on and what's happening on St. Martin. There's lots of stuff going on on St. Martin. We also have our um, brochure that's on our Facebook page accessible and on the government page that's accessible for anybody who wants information on what sports are active, um, what sport activities are going on, who to contact, how to contact them. Um, so that if you want your child or your acquaintance or your whoever to be involved, um, you can always go to the brochure and see and contact people directly. So um, we're going to continue to bring the awareness about sport, activity, movement, um, what's going on on St. Martin. And um, yeah, the general public can stay tuned. All right, radio listeners. Uh, that's what we had for you this morning. I want to thank you guys for being my guests. We definitely have to have you back for it. We've got to do a two-hour program because there's yeah. so much to discuss, but there's so much awareness to bring out there. Because exactly. if you look at your annual report compared to what people think, think is going on. <laughs> you know, it... Yeah. it, it gives a total different picture you know yes. uh, so i think it's important to bring about that awareness and and to Wonderful. share that with the general public so that you stop hearing there's nothing going on in sports exactly. <laughs> and stuff like that yeah. all right radio listeners uh that's what we had for you this morning i want to thank you so much for being with us uh, up next is of course the master d weekend house party followed at 12 by uh tobias and crew's gonna step in with caribbean classics until next week you know, great is great, can always be better. So don't hate, learn to appreciate. Ciao for now, take care, bye-bye.